All right, so the M3 MacBook Airs are here, and if you haven't read any press releases or seen anything about this device, it's gonna look very familiar because it's essentially the exact same as last year, except for a few tweaks that all happen to be internal. I mean, even down to the design on the box, it's the same as what we saw with the M2. Now, I was a little excited and already ripped the tabs off, but I didn't take the paper off, so we're still gonna get a pretty nice peel with this unboxing. So this is the 13-inch M3 MacBook Air. Typically, I go with the base model. However, this time, this is the 16 gigabyte memory and 512 gigabyte of storage model. So just a couple of spec bumps because of what I do use this for. If you're not familiar with my channel, I pretty much have been running everything off of a MacBook Air since I started this channel, including my TikTok and everything that I post on Reels. So I have the M1 MacBook Air here. This is strictly base model. And then I also have the M2 15 inch MacBook Air in midnight. So we're gonna have a good chance to do some comparisons and see just how the M3 stacks up with these two guys here. I suspect that most people buying this device are coming from either the M1 MacBook Air or one of the Intel variants. So uh, the jump up to the M3 is gonna be huge for you. So we're not gonna spend too much time inside the box because it's pretty much the same as last year. So you're gonna get this nice midnight blue color matched braided cable that is a USB-C to MagSafe charging cable. You're also gonna get your usual paperwork with the Apple stickers at the back. So two midnight blue Apple stickers. And then finally on the inside, we have the little charging brick as well. So that is pretty much everything in terms of the unboxing. Now onto the most important part is the actual device itself. So believe it or not, but one of these is an M3 MacBook Air and the other one is an M2 MacBook Air. The only difference between the two of these guys here side by side is that one is obviously 15 inches and the other one is obviously 13 inches. Now looking at this year's M3 MacBook Air, it comes in the exact same colors, it comes in the exact same two sizes, 13 and 15 inch, and it comes in the exact same variations. Now this actually happens to be the M3 MacBook Air and this one happens to be the M2 MacBook Air. The reason why I have them side by side is to help identify the differences between this year and last year's iteration. So as I said before, they look the exact same. There is absolutely nothing changed about the chassis. All the differences come on the inside of these devices. So looking at the M3 MacBook Air, you still have two USB-C ports on the side that are both Thunderbolt ports this time. You're now able to support up to two external displays so long as the lid is closed. The other major difference between the two of these is that with the M3, you're gonna get the faster Wi-Fi 6E, so that is two times faster than regular Wi-Fi 6. And finally, according to Apple, the M3 is going to be 1.4 times faster than the M2 and 1.6 times faster than the M1. But if you're comparing it to one of the Intel MacBook Airs, then you're looking at a 16 times speed difference. But that being said, I don't think that many people are going to be switching from the M2 up to the M3. So for a more accurate comparison, let's look at the M1 MacBook Air. So this here is my M1 MacBook Air, excuse the skin, but this is where you're gonna get most differences and I think this is where the most value is gonna come from, from an upgrade standpoint. The majority of the people out there that are sitting with the Intel MacBook Airs or maybe even an old MacBook Pro and the people who have the M1 with the older chassis style that doesn't have MagSafe, this is gonna be more the realm of people that wanna to upgrade to the latest and greatest that's offered from Apple. So the starting price for the M3 MacBook Airs is $1099 for this variant here, the 13 inch size or $12.99 if you're gonna bump up to the 15 inches. My recommendation, as people always say here on YouTube, is not to stick with the base model. Did I do it? Yes. My use case, I don't know if it's gonna be the same as yours, but for me, I do a lot of video editing on my YouTube channel, as you can tell. I also have a pretty active TikTok account and a very active Instagram account as well. All of my video editing gets done on either this M1 machine or my M2 because of the larger 15 inch display. Both of those devices, my M1 and my M2, happen to be base models and I've not had many issues. I film 4K 10 bit videos, um, I edit on 4K timelines and I don't have much problem because my videos are never more than 12 minutes long. Obviously Instagram Reels and TikToks are usually about 60 seconds. 
Yes, I've done professional work for big box companies, but even those videos as well happen to be very short. So I'm able to get away with that. If you have a much longer workflow, let's say you're editing podcasts, uh, video podcasts rather, and other just larger forms of content, then maybe you're gonna wanna bump up to something more than an air. But I think for 95% of people, the airs, especially with this new M3 chip, is going to be more than enough. And sorry, I just remembered there is one additional change between the M3 and the M2, only if you're buying this midnight colorway. So one major issue with last year's model was that this thing is a fingerprint and grease magnet. So if you touch your face or just throughout your day-to-day -day end up touching this outer shell of the device, you're gonna to see tons of fingerprints and stuff on it, smudges, and it just looks gross. It might be hard to see, so B-roll might help us a little bit. Whereas on the new M3, they have that uh, anodized coating, the same thing that we saw on the black MacBook Pros of last year that hide the fingerprints so much better. So far, so good. You can still see a couple of prints, but it's definitely less noticeable. All right, so first impressions, again, looking at someone who's gonna be upgrading from the M1 up to this guy here. The reason why you might wanna upgrade from this guy to this guy here, aside from that 1.6 times faster speed difference, is because of the convenience of the ports. So yes, obviously the M1 MacBook Air also has two USB-C ports, and this guy here also has two USB-C ports. The major difference here is that this has an additional MagSafe port where on the M1, you had to dedicate one of those USB-C ports to charge your device. You're now able to charge while still having both of your USB-Cs available for use. On top of that, because these are both Thunderbolt ports, as I said earlier, you're able to support up to two external displays so long as this lid is closed. One problem with that or one annoying thing, unfortunately, both of these ports happen to be on the same side and you're not gonna put both of your monitors to the left of your device. In a lot of setups, it ends up where your MacBook is gonna be in the center some way and so that split of the cords might be annoying for some people unless you are somebody that happens to place your MacBook on the right of your displays. That way, all of your cords are running to the left. I know it's very finicky, very nitpicky, of a thing to complain about, but just something for consideration if you do plan to use this with two external displays. As far as everything else goes, the differences between the M1 and the M3, if that is the upgrade that you are going to make, as I suspect most people will, you're gonna have a difference in displays as well. So the bezel on the M3 is a lot slimmer than the bezel on the M1. The bezels on the M1 are much thicker, especially on the top than the bezels on the M3 because it does have that nice new pro design with the notch at the top. So you're able to save a lot of screen real estate on this guy here. The branding is also a little bit different. So there's no MacBook Air uh, logo inside of the lid of this guy. Whereas on the M1, you do have that MacBook Air branding. Is that something that's important to people? Probably not. What is important though is the fact that these do have the uh, biometric unlock, so you're able to use the fingerprint sensor to unlock your device, to use uh, Apple Pay and things like that. The M3 does have a nice large fingerprint sensor similar to the M2, but again, if you're someone that's coming from that M1 and you're looking at the size of this fingerprint scanner, it's a lot bigger, it's a lot easier to use, and in my opinion, it is a lot faster and more accurate. In terms of the cameras, this is what you're used to from the M1 and the Intel Max, so not very good, not very sharp, whereas on the M3, it does look a lot better. The colors are a lot better. This is in a very controlled environment with professional lighting setup, so um, you would expect that the M1 would be a lot better than it is, but it does look quite terrible. This, again, is what the M3 looks like. This is what you can expect on your FaceTime calls. Uh, in my opinion, it is pretty good. This room does have an echo, so it's not doing the microphones justice, but the mics are a lot better as well. So we know that not many people consider Mac when we talk about gaming devices, but in the last year or so, Apple has made the attempt to get into the gaming market, so to speak. So we know that the iPhones are capable of ray tracing and they're bringing a lot of AAA titles to the iPhone, but they're also trying to do the same thing with the Max this year. The only one that I had the chance to play so far is Drift Legends, but it was really cool being able to connect to a PS5 controller and playing this game and seeing just how good the graphics were compared to previous generations of Mac. Well, I don't know how much that matters to people. I doubt that many people are buying this to play games on anyways, but it is cool to see that it has that capability and that it's able to do it so well despite not having a fan and still not overheating. So I know this video ended up being pretty short, but with all the changes being internal and minor spec bumps to a device that was 
frankly already fantastic. Um, I'm definitely gonna need to spend more time with this MacBook, see how it does when I'm editing videos and color grading and doing all of those things that I typically do on my M2. I only imagine that it's gonna be faster and more efficient. I am excited to see what the export times look like and if it does end up saving me much time by comparison. I know for a fact it's gonna be definitely better than my M1 and definitely better than whatever Intel you guys might have out there. So be sure to look out for my full review for those of you who are interested in upgrading to this device and learning more about what it's actually capable of this year. But that's pretty much it for me. Much love as always, stone up two of them and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.